It's great to meet together again for our group, and I hope this will be a wonderful time for you. Let me start off today by telling you a personal story. Marshall, our uh, 10-year-old son at the time, he's now 31, but he and I were at a ball game and he wanted some candy. So I gave him $2 and he came back with a bag of Skittles. He tore it open and he started eating it. And, and as dads often do, I leaned over and I said, hey, give me a couple. And he said, no. And, and I asked Marshall, please just give me a couple of your Skittles. They look good. Well, as a snotty nosed 12 year old, he said to me, no, dad, they are mine. <laughs> well, all of us experience this when we want one of the kids French fries or a sip of their Coke or a taste of their ice cream, you know. But there were a few things Marshall didn't understand that day. See, those Skittles came from me. And he wouldn't have had them if they hadn't come from me. And he didn't understand that I was bigger than he was at that time. And if I'd wanted to, I could snatch the whole thing out of his hands and I could eat the whole bag and there'd be nothing he could have done about it. And he also didn't understand I had a $50 bill in my pocket. And I could go to the concession stand and I could rain Skittles down on his little head. I could bury that little snot in a pile of Skittles. So let's get real. <laughs> Using that illustration of my son, we need to think about our lives because, you see, we all live daily with our bag of Skittles. Some have a little bag, and some have a medium-sized bag of Skittles, and some have a Bill Gates-sized bag of Skittles, but we all have our own bag of Skittles. And all throughout the Bible, God says to us, you know what? I want you to take some of those Skittles and I want you to give them to me for my work on earth. And so many, even Christians say, no, that's mine. And the reason we say that is because we fail to understand the Skittle principle. And that principle is this. First of all, everything I have comes from God. Secondly, life can take it away from me at any time. And boy, so many have experienced that in the last two years of COVID, haven't they? But number three, God can replenish everything that I give away. Listen to what Malachi, uh, you know, over in the Old Testament, chapter 3, verse 10 says. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. So there'll be enough food in my temple. And if you do, says the Lord Almighty, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. And then he adds these words. I think it's so cool. He says, hey, try it. Try me, he's saying. Let me prove it to you. So here's a key thought for us. Often the reason God doesn't trust us with more of his stuff is because we've not proven to be generous and appreciative of what we already have. Now right here, I want us to take the next few moments and I want us to ask and then answer four questions. So discuss these and then we'll come back with more. To answer that question of what means more to us than anything else, we, all we really have to do is look at our checkbook or our credit card statement and see where we're spending the resources, the money that God gives us. Because see, that shows us how tightly we hold the Skittles in our lives. The key thought is this, we invest in what we think is important. God wants us to invest in generosity. Now, here's a second question to discuss. If 
The answer to the question of what matters the most to God, you know what it is. First of all, it's his glory. Because, I mean, God says, no one can take the glory away from me. But the second most important thing to God is people. And I want to remind you, and me, that there are over 400,000 people in this area where we live, not just over in China or in Russia or somewhere, but right in this area where we live, 400,000 plus people without Christ. And Simple Church is gifted to reach out to them. And we exist to see all of us grow in Christ so we can reach those who are not yet here and do not yet know Christ's forgiveness in their lives. You know, I really believe the most healthy church is what we are becoming. And that means a third of the people are not yet believers, and a third are newer believers, and a third are strong in their faith and are seeking to minister to the other two-thirds. So when our objective in life is not lined up with God's objective in life, how do we expect to be blessed by God? That's true for Simple Church, and that's true for you and me. So here's a third question to discuss. Isn't it interesting when you and I think about how many people have been generous to us, so many names start coming into our minds. I can't tell you about my life without telling you about my mother and my father and Miss Rose, my third grade elementary teacher, and Roy and Ann Bills, who were so generous to us in Howard City, Michigan, and Don and Vera Stevenson, who helped make a 22-year television ministry possible, and Jack and Gilda Clark, who helped build church buildings for us, and Judy Allen, my wife, who's given her life to me so generously. And her mom and dad, Frank and Virginia Smith, were so generous to us. And then Irene Knapp and John and Marjorie Sackett and Don Morris, my best friend and co-worker for 37 years, and Jeff Mullen, my dear friend of 19 years of ministry. And the names go on because it includes so many of you here today. You know, I can't even begin to list all of the generous people who have blessed my life. And my entire life, my entire life has been impacted and imprinted by generous people. And I really praise God for them. I hope you will praise God for those who've been so generous to you. And that we'll try to model in other people's lives what they did for us. Well, here's a final question for our time together. When your friends, family, and co-workers are describing their life, how often do they say, oh, <laughs> I have to tell you about, and then they put your name in there? You see, only the names of generous, other-centered people will ever come up in those kind of discussions. And God says, that's the way I want you, Tom Allen, you, dear friend, to live your life. Put your emphasis in people, not stuff. So our challenge is to open up our hearts, to ask God what he would have you and your family do with what you have. A good prayer would be, God, everything I have right now belongs to you. Please tell me what you want me to do with it. God has blessed and provided for and used Simple Church. And because of that, we have an opportunity before us this year that we have not had since we began to do something that will usher this church into its next stage of ministry and outreach. We saw the first of those opportunities Sunday, and we'll see three more in the next weeks. So may we take these opportunities seriously 
and be generous and watch the blessings flow.